this is our house now. So tonight, you guys just play games. Enjoy it. Enjoy playing the way we play. Let's all go to work tonight. All right? Welcome into Juice CU Arena and happy long weekend. The Lopes are back in action for their third WAC conference game. This one against a UTRGV team that sits directly atop of them in the standings. The Lopes coming in nine and six, one and one in the WAC. The Vaqueros 12 and seven, two and one in the WAC. Let's join the court for the national anthem and the prayer. The Lopes coming off a loss to the number one team in the WAC, New Mexico State. That game, they actually won rebounds 33 to 30, and if they're gonna wanna vie for the top spot in the WAC today and knock off the Vaqueros, they're gonna need to work the boards. Certainly that starts with Zelora Masakoy. She leads the WAC in rebounds per game at 8.5. The Vaqueros have two players who average over seven rebounds a game as well. So this is really gonna come down to rebounds and who can get more of them. Starting lineups are as follows for the Vaqueros of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Bernicia Peters and the woman from Iceland, Bjorg Karchen's daughter. We'll start at forward. Shante Goff, the leader of the Vaqueros, also at guard. Marie Savoy at forward, and Megan Johnson at guard.
and thank you for joining us at this two o'clock afternoon game. I'm Taylor Vaughn alongside Alex Larson for a conference matchup, of course, today. Like you said, Alex, coming off a loss two nights ago against Mexico State, they really played well in the second half, and we're looking for them to come out a little bit stronger today in this first half and bring some big boards. As we're leading the conference in rebounds, we look to have big rebounds from Massacoy and Marina Laramie, of course. Massacoy and Mobley coming into this game really starting to fill, fulfill their starting lineup positions. They've started kind of late into this season. You know, we've seen a lot of lineup changes throughout the season. Gajewski was starting early on in place now. Massacoy coming in as well as Mobley. So looks to be a great matchup today against Texas, of course. So we look to see some high expectations today. Yeah, you know, Bree Mobley, uncharacteristically, 17 points against New yeah. Mexico State. That's right behind the leader, Marita Laramie. So Mobley, with that production, still was unable to help Grand Canyon win. They'll look to get it done here today. And Mobley had 17 points versus New Mexico, and it was her second double-double of the season. Shantae Goff, the leader, a senior guard for this Vaqueros team, turning the ball over. First possession, just wasted, squandered. Marcos Canedo, forward position will take it up. Bree Mobley, speaking of her production, couldn't finish an easy cut to the basket. Give the ball right back to Vaqueros. Driving in, fouled by Laramie, it'll be an and one. That's something we saw, Alex, early on in the New Mexico State game. We had Massacoy, Rarick, and Laramie all in foul trouble early on in the half, forcing them to the bench. Rarick not coming back in until third quarter. We can't have that today. You know, early on in these few minutes, Laramie's really got to use her size to her advantage, but also stay straight up in the paint. Mary Savoy making, completing the three-point play. To build onto that, that's something that Head coach Trent May talked about them not doing is the and ones and the turnovers, and that all builds up as Laramie will lose possession of that ball. Thought it was tipped, but it, she didn't get the call. And UTRGV is up with it. Mobley on the defense. UTRGV coming into this game third in the WAC, and of course GCU sitting just behind them, fourth in Western Athletic Conference play. Savoy down low, under putting that one in. She's tall and a nice touch on the shot. Marcos Canedo looking for a pick, guarded by Bernicia Peters. Only drives left, finds nothing, kicks it out to Rorick, who's got a wide open three ball jacked up and she hits it to put the first points of the game on the board for the Lopes. It's a triple. Nice little Driving replay in for you. And off the glass, Mary Savoy, another nice play in the paint. Rarick having a great season so far. She's been averaging around 10 points per game, and she wasn't even starting early on in the season, Alex. Savoy had someone cross court wide open for three, was selfish and took it herself amongst three defenders, and GCU got the outcome they wanted. Mobley looks for something outside the three-point line. She surveys, drives, puts up a floater inside the paint, doesn't go, gets her own rebound though and tries to kick it out to a teammate, is unable to do so, it'll be a turnover. 17 points given up off turnovers against New Mexico State. Gonna wanna tame that here in today's game against another seasonably strong WAC opponent. They've done well though throughout the season forcing turnovers on the defensive side. They've caused problems for its opponents forcing 15.7 takeaways and netted 216 points off of turnovers. Goff, a three. long three-pointer. Didn't go but rebounded underneath. Megan Johnson puts it back up. 36 points in the paint surrendered by the Lopes 
in Thursday's matchup, Thursday's loss. Another statistic they'll want to keep in check today against the Vaqueros. Rorick, low finds nothing, able to get it away to Anaya Baker. She'll dump it off to Mobley. Mobley cuts, fouled underneath. I think they'll call it on Megan Johnson. Mobley has a decent free throw percentage, 77% from the free throw line. She's also been shooting very well. Of course, 17 points versus Mexico. She recorded her second double-double of the season. Yeah, talk about double-doubles. Nine this far recorded from the Lopes. And uh, five of them are from different players. So they're getting a lot of production and a lot of solid production. She's been averaging around 12 points per game. She's right under Marina Laramie, who's been averaging nearly twice that at about 20 points a game. Goff looks for Johnson, can't get the pass off, and here comes GCU. Laramie pulls up, rims in. 9-6. Good decision by Marina Laramie to pull up and an even better pass by her teammate. That's going to be a great asset for Marina Laramie. When she gets out early and scores early, she gains that confidence and that momentum that she needs to carry in throughout the game. So that'll be a great advantage for her tonight. Savoy puts that one up. She has an absolute beautiful shot. Mary Savoy, so smooth and clean. Unable to get that one to fall, though. Mobley outside in the paint, backing down is Laramie. And a nice fadeaway, is unable to fall, Anaya Baker. And the Vaqueros are gonna tip it out, keeping possession with the Lopes, and a substitute coming on. Kiara Clark comes onto the court, Marina Laramie comes off. Kara Clark hasn't really seen a whole lot of time this season. She's come in usually later into these games in the third or fourth quarter, so it's good to see her really getting out there early into this game to make a difference, changing up the dynamic of the five out there. Peters, Benicia Peters pulls up, the leader in assists. She'll get it off the glass, bank that one in. Seen it a couple times, pulling up maybe prematurely and shooting. That time gets it to fall. Rarick drives left, fouled big time. She'll go to the line and shoot two. She was in the motion. We're gonna finally see Gajewski check in, a name that we love to talk about. She hasn't started the last few games, Alex, which was kind of surprising as she had started early on. You know, she's been averaging you know, large numbers. She's been averaging about 13 points a game. She had 10 points against New Mexico. She's really been shooting beyond the arc a lot, and she really brings in big numbers. And to see her not start for the third game in a row, a little bit surprising, but she's also that key player that comes off the bench and brings that momentum and that depth that I don't think other opponents really realize. Yeah, well, GCU as a whole team is solid behind the line. Jajewski's 32nd in the country in percentage from behind the three-point arc. Yeah, they have uh, 117 baskets from the uh, beyond the arc. Averaging about eight three-pointers per game. Michelle Hyman will get it off to Bernicia Peters. Peters looking for something at the top. This is a corner. Three ball, and it's good by Nichelle Hyman. Hyman, 26% on the three ball this season. 37% from the field. Now both teams today coming in, having losses. UTRGV coming in from a loss at CSU Bakersfield. They lost pretty big deficit, 74-46. Before that, they had their longest winning streak in program history with a big win over Chicago State. So both teams hungry to come out for a victory today, and we'll be right back after this break. 
fans, if you see a top play or any great waction, let us know about it using the hashtag WACTOP5. Then go to our Instagram every Monday to see if your video made the cut. Be sure to vote on your favorites and tune in to the WAC Digital Network on Wednesdays to see where each play ranks. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Jesse Punch. And welcome back to GCU Arena, taking a quick break here in the first quarter. Lopes just down 14 to 8, but of course, the whole game left to play. Alex, I know you wanted to discuss passing and passing in the paint. What do you have to say about that and the expectations for this Lopes team? GCU is doing an all right job of forcing outside shots, but they're not doing a good mm -hmm. enough job. 10 of the 14 points for the Vaqueros come from in the paint. They're letting the passes get down there a little too easily, and then they're letting these Vaquero players finish too easily down there. I need to see, uh, I'd like to see more physicality mm -hmm. and uh, really getting in there, not afraid to get some fouls every now and then if that's what it comes down to. Absolutely, and they were really challenged against New Mexico State as New Mexico came out really in a full court press from the beginning of the game. So really physical game two nights ago. We look to see that again tonight, you know, and GCU has really been known as sort of a second half team and we hope they come out a little bit stronger today in the first half, but of course, they were a 14 point deficit in the first quarter against New Mexico State, so they're no stranger to being down and coming back in the second half. So we'll see what happens today, but we just hope they get a little bit more energy and some confidence under their belt and come out strong. Certainly not what they want either way if they're not familiar to being down. Trent May saying mm -hmm. that was the reason why they lost. You can't go on those uh, long runs, on the wrong end of the runs, I should say, as Mobley tries to put up a shot off the timeout, doesn't go, and I believe is fouled. Now 14 point deficit in that first quarter against New Mexico, but they went on an 11-0 run, Alex, in the second quarter against New Mexico. There's a good inbounding play right there. Alex Bloom finds a cutting Laramie, and it's the easiest two points they've gotten so far. Two players coming in who hasn't seen a lot of game time. Alex Bloom and Kiara Clark. Alex, why do you think Coach Trent May is putting these strangers to the court here in so early? Well, just playing a game on Thursday coming off a loss. You're just trying to, especially in conference games, you got to get your bench going and get everybody uh, chipping in for some points because it's a long season, it's a long conference season, and you know you need everybody to contribute if you want to have a chance to win the WAC title. A lot of these other teams have that depth as well. Laramie looking a little bit defeated on that bottom play right there. Hopefully she keeps her head today, Alex, and stays composed. She's such a leader on this team and such a dynamic player. Now Peters drives and a charging. Yeah, it looks, they're not gonna call a charge. They're gonna call a blocking foul on Jessica Jajewski. Looks like a clear charge as Bernicia Peters sent two lopes to the ground. She'll go to the line for two as the coaching staff over on the GCU bench, not happy at all. Peters' first one is no good. She is 70% from the free throw line. A 5'3 sophomore smallest in stature on this team, yet still a vital part to the Vaqueros' success. Rebounded, of course, with the help of Zelor Masakoy, but brought down by Jessica Jajewski. Marcos Canedo. Nice hesitation move by Mobley in the corner. Jajewski can't get off the teardrop. Bat it really down and they'll get it right back. Sorry about that, Taylor, but just what you need off a turnover. Absolutely, great transition play there. I'd like to see the Lopes really spread the floor some more. Open the space, see the gaps, and utilize those areas. Laramie looking open down low, but a lot of passive play beyond the arc here. They need to take advantage of these gaps in the paint. 
Yeah, like you said, spread out as a nice bucket off the glass for Marcos Canedo, but a team that's so good at shooting from beyond, the Orange shouldn't be afraid to spread out the court. And you're exactly right. Puts it up, but can't get it to go, and Savoy unsuccessful on that attempt, pulled down by Bree Mobley. Laramie doing a nice job under the paint, staying straight up and down. She knows that she can't get another foul in this first quarter. Doing well of utilizing her body. Nice little two-point jumper for her there, just off the glass. Masakoi tiptoes the baseline, loses possession. And now Casey Rarick will come on, Rim Oakley will come off. We'll see an inbound that'll start in the hands of Laura Marcos Canedo. Last time an inbounds play was executed to perfection by the Lopes. This is the seventh all-time meeting between GCU and UTRGV in, of course, conference and program history. They're split, Alex, three and three, but UTRG vin winning the last two meetings. Last time they met was this time last year, losing 66-68. So a close game, and as you can see, two-point deficit right now. We're sure to have a close one. Same thing, an inbound to Laramie underneath, trying to cut, fouled. And we'll see another inbound. The Vaqueros playing close defense today. You start, saw them start off in a 2-3 extended zone, but they're coming out into more of a man-to-man -man defense now. And I can expect to see that throughout the game, playing more body-to-body -body defense. Physicality there on the inbound. The UTRGV defenders call it a travel on Laramie. Going to give possession back to the Vaqueros. Karcha Dodder will get this one in to Shantae Goff. Two minutes remain, 14-12 the score of Vaqueros lead. Three point ball from the corner is far. And skirmishes for the ball, it's picked up by Masakoy, able to keep her wherewithal and stay in bounds. Good job. Looking to tie the game on this possession here. Anaya Baker drives right, nothing, turned back left. Pass to Juski, deflected but able to keep the possession. Anaya Baker, another strong player. Six points a game, four rebounds, 4.6 assists. She brings in those stats. Of course, she didn't start either today. But such depth on this GCU team, really, I think that's such an advantage that we have against other opponents in the conference is that our bench is so deep. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked about, why Trent May is getting the bench players in early because they all have the talent and the ability to pitch in and help this team win a huge whack game here at home on a Saturday. Three point, no good by Rarick. Good, good rebound there by August to Shard. Able to keep possession and reset the shot clock for the Lopes. Up top looking to make something happen. Rarick puts up a ball from beyond the arc, doesn't go. Rarick firing three threes early on this first quarter. Love to see that confidence, Alex. He's such a dynamic player beyond the arc. Gonna get a foul on Zilor Masakoy, a holding. So an inbound here. Johnson, Megan Johnson substitutes back on. And the shell Hyman comes off. The inbound all the way to the top. The top of the court is received. Shot put up by Karch Dodder, no good. The Queros 12 and 7 overall in the season, 2 and 1 in the conference. Of course, coming off that loss against CSU Bakersfield, but a big win for them over Chicago State earlier in the season. Another long three ball by Shantae Goff. Doesn't go, but it's pulled down by Lele Havile. 
A lot of fouls early on, Alex. Both on sides with this physicality. This is kind of what you talked about before the game to see this defense kind of come out on them and to us play a little bit more aggressive. Can both be a good and bad thing when transitioning, but we're seeing this early on in this first quarter. And a reason why the game has sort of slowed down. No points in the last four minutes, 42 seconds for the Vaqueros. And GCU has a drought of 215. So the defense certainly stepping it up here. It was run and gun early to start. That's something we wanted to see them do against New Mexico State, though. New Mexico State really ran the ball well up and down the court. They had so much speed. They were running and gunning, passing the ball well up court. And we had a hard time slowing them down and really transitioning into a set-up play. They came out on us defensively, offensively, and shot the ball well. So for us to be able to come out today and slow this Vaqueros team down, I think that will be an important aspect for a victory today. New Mexico State, of course, atop the WAC, both their men's and women's team, have been notorious for uh, dominating the WAC. Of course, GCU trying to stop that dominance, and you know the, the run and gun that they saw against New Mexico State, they're going to have to stay with that in the course of the season if they're going to want to compete. They're going to have to create their own brand of run and gun. As we have more discrepancies here, a lot of delay of game, Alex, right now. It's you know, something you see every now and then in the women's GCU games. Maybe a little bit too much checking the replays and seeing what's going on instead of letting them play. Looks like they're adding more time here on the clock. I guess that's a pretty uh, essential part of the end of the first quarter. Three point ball from the corner. Well short, and it's kicked out of bounds. The Vaqueros will retain possession. 17 seconds left in the first quarter. Score remains 14 to 12, two point deficit, GCU down. Looking for a great steal Here comes there. Laramie, three on one, back to Laramie. She'll put it up, and in, it's tied. 10 seconds to go. Great and that's the run and gun play there, Alex. That's exactly the run and gun you want to see, just what you said. Air ball, no good, and that is how. Nope, 0.5 seconds ago. Not quite, still got to finish off this quarter. We saw the replay on that one, Anaya Baker and Laramie really doing a great job of positioning them well, creating the space between the defender and capitalizing on that to tie this game up. This one up from mid-court doesn't go. And that's the end of the first 14 apiece. We'll be right back for the start of the second when we get back. I'm Taylor and I'm getting my bachelor's of science degree in marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Certainly a different end of the first quarter as uh, the start, 14-14. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vaqueros still on a drought. They haven't scored in about five minutes. And they have caused Seven turnovers for UTRGV compared to GCU's four, and five of those have been steals. So the aggressiveness for the Lopes has certainly risen, hasn't it, Taylor? That's right, and I feel like they learned a lot from the Mexico State game, learning how to transition defensively and come out a little bit more. They were leaving gaps open on 
the New Mexico State game against their defender, and I think Coach Trent May went back to the drawing board and said, hey, we need to come out strong, go around these players. We can't leave so much room open for them to shoot and to drive in. So they're really collapsing well on the defensive side and holding up that paint. Laramie doing a nice job on all sides. Like to see her have a little bit more aggressiveness defensively, but really overall a great first quarter. Down low, now back up to the top and stolen. So the sixth steal, this one to start the second quarter, a nice spin move by Baker, but unable to put it in. Tipped off by the Vaqueros and GCU's ball. We saw Massacoy really go in for that rebound. She's done a great job of leading the Lopes in the rebounding statistical side. She had eight points against New Mexico, but averaging nearly nine rebounds a game. Anaya Baker able to get the ball back again for GCU. Really starting to settle into this game. It seems like the Lopes are and command it on defense. Laramie backs down. Puts that one over her defender, but doesn't go. It's Carson's daughter that gets the rebound. UTRGV coming back out of that first quarter, attempting to cover the paint a little more, seeing as Anaya Baker driving in late into that first quarter, you're gonna see them sort of collapse more into the paint. Backcourt violation here. So the Lopes are gonna get it. It seems like a common theme. So keep watching the Vaqueros work on offense as they like to overload one side and force the pressure at least a half dozen times, if not more. You've seen a cross court pass all the way to the corner three ball on the opposite side. So you've got to wonder what GCU's going to do to combat that strategy as Tanisha Daniels checks on Zelor Masakoy comes off. GCU looking to take the first lead of the game. Tanisha Daniels, really big height advantage for GCU, stands at 6-1. She averages about two points a game, three rebounds. One assist has quite the statistical measurements for GCO, so great to see her come on early on too. And with her and Laramie down low in the paint, they can do some damage on this Vaqueros team. Carson's daughter guarded by Rarick. Now there's a corner three. This one doesn't go. A foul is gonna be called. Tanisha Daniels saddled with it. It's her, her first. Good to see her getting in there and not being afraid to get a call against. She'll guard Mary Savoy. Savoy able to get that one in and UTRGV takes back the two point lead. That was a great defensive attempt though by Laramie. She stepped in nicely baseline to cover that guard, but just got her around a little too quickly and got that shot off. Peters, aggressive play there, backfires, and a foul is called. Probably put that one off after the fact and made it, but it doesn't count as Daniels comes off. Massacoy back in. Mobley will inbound. Look for Casey Rarick to wheel around and get a shot from the three-point line. Not gonna work there as Mobley's gonna drive in. She'll get it herself, 16-16. Nice little hook shot in the paint for her. You'll see the replay. Laramie with the handoff. Nice little smooth dish right into the basket for Mobley. Peters looking to make something happen again. Ideal Turk. Turk tries for it and will keep it. She'll take a long three. It would have been a bank if it went just to beat the shot clock and no chance. So now GCU still trying to take the lead for the first time today. Stolen. It's Mary Savoy. One on one. 
she won't be able to finish. But a foul called. And Baker and Masakoy, an argument underneath the rim, maybe whose responsibility that was defensively. Nonetheless, it'll lead to two shots and another chance for the Vaqueros to take the lead. You're seeing, Alex, the Vaqueros really playing this pass and play above the arc, avoiding going inside the paint. We're doing a nice job of playing blocks on all sides within the paint, keeping the offense on the out there. Savoy hits that one, 17-16. 71% from the free throw line. And that one no good. Good looking shot, 17-16. Just checked back in for the Lopes. Laramie, she's gonna take a three ball way too far, doesn't even get rim. And Bernicia Peters is gonna draw the foul. It's called on Casey Rarick. So getting, Rarick. A, getting a lot of ticky tacky fouls here, Alex. Rest seeming to call everything, and when that happens, you really have to be careful and just the way you play. Really keep your hands off, stay as close as you can without any major contact because as soon as they start calling that, they start calling everything and you end up in foul trouble. That's right, but to a certain degree, you can't keep calling everything. If you're the referees, just let the girls get out there and play. It's a nice rebound, tip from Mobley to Marcos Canedo. And GCU up with it. Six and a half to go here in the first half. Jajewski looking for something up top. Laramie down low, Zelor Masakoy off the glass and in, but I think a foul was called before. Mary Savoy called on the foul, and there's, geez, another one. It looks like it'll be under the basket. She won't get that two point and one. It'll be an inbounds play, Mobley to throw the ball in under the basket. Laramie drives and tough and she tries to reverse it in. Fouled and she'll see two shots from the line and look to give the Lopes the first lead of this Saturday afternoon. Laramie with a 66% free throw percentage. She does quite well from the line. She did really great two nights ago shooting Nearly 90% from the line. Laramie just, I'd say GCU's most well-rounded player. Every aspect pretty solid for Marina Laramie. Not only shooting, but then her height gives her the advantage under the rim and able to get rebounds. Good eye for assists. GCU leads for the first time, 18-17, thanks to Two free throws by Laramie. Carson's daughter. The pass to Shantae Goff. Goff guarded by Mobley. Puts up a three ball in the corner, it's good. Michelle Hyman. 66%, two of three. And that'll give the Vaqueros the lead again. Yeah, they left her wide open on that one. Something they really need to transition into is coming out beyond the arc, expecting that they'll Mobley. able to shoot. A nice shot over her defenders. And that ties up, what a shot by Bree Mobley. Here's the nice replay for you. Mobley right. set and jumper right there for two points. Averaging a, quite a nice number and 17 points against New Mexico. There's an air ball. Michelle Hyman, another wide open chance behind the three point line though. Fortunately not capitalizing, but like you said, Taylor GCU needing to find an answer for that. Talked about the points in the paint, that's minimized. Now to 12, so only two more points in the paint in the second quarter so far, but the three point ball is the problem. A timeout called now. This will be a 30-second timeout. 
and we'll be right back after this. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting edge next generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back here, tied at 20 GCU and UTRGV. For the Vaqueros, they have had 11 chances. Eight of those probably wide open from behind the three-point line. Only hit two. This score could be a little worse here if GCU continues to give up these three-point shots. What do you think they're gonna have to do to adjust from giving up points in the paint now to giving too many open three-point balls? Absolutely, it all comes down to the defensive effort, really. Laramie does a great job down low. She's really tough, she uses her size well. I think if they can get Tanisha Daniels back in there down low, and they can do kind of a dynamic do or pressure down low, it'll keep them out on the arc. They haven't really shot too well, but they are willing to take the shot. And you know, if they keep shooting, something will fall. So keeping that pressure outside really and allowing those gaps not to be formed so they can really capitalize on the defensive side. You know, defense can win games, honestly, and I think that's what they're gonna need to do today. It's certainly been a defensive-minded game, especially right. in the second quarter. 10-10, or 14-14 to end the first quarter. Only mm -hmm. six points for each team halfway through here. 2020, so we'll see if this defensive game keeps up. Anaya Baker all the way up top to Laramie and a good job finding the inbound. See if eight, seven, seven seconds on the shot clock, I, sh I should say. Got to get something off, and that one looked to be tipped, but I guess it wasn't as Laramie, Laramie shot well off. One of these teams looking to take the offensive momentum. Unable to do so though, another missed shot from behind the three-point line. And are you gonna see a foul on the rebound? I don't think so. Either way, the Vaqueros will keep possession. And an inbound opportunity here. Vaqueros don't have that great a ball movement here. They seem to get a little flustered with a tendency of pressure here. Not really knowing what to do with this defensive effort here that we're putting up. Nice big rebound for Massacoy there. Lobes possession. Well, they clearly try to get the ball to Bernicia Peters. She dishes the ball better than anyone on this Vaqueros team. No momentum so far though in the second quarter. Jajewski puts up a three ball that doesn't go. Shot's not really falling for us, Alex. We may need to capitalize on the movement down low and really drive in. Shot's not falling for either team so far. There's another missed shot. Carson's got to can't keep that one to go right underneath the rim, and we'll see if the Lopes now can grab possession on this possession. I should say grab momentum as it'll be backcourt violation. The pass unable to be held by Jessica Jajewski. Lopes breaking down just a little bit. You can tell they're getting a little frustrated after these silly mistakes occurring, but picking their heads up late into the second quarter, still have such a big game tied here at 2020. It's anybody's game. Point droughts for each team, 210 for the Lopes, and it's two and a half minutes for UTRGV. One of those teams looking to break that drought, and the drought, I should say. Michelle Hyman, not gonna take that from way beyond the three-point line. Drives right, loses it. Was it tipped off a GCU defender? It was. Did a nice job though, they really rotated well on that defense. You saw Casey Rarick transition well onto her man, forcing that out. The inbound pass deflected. Anaya Baker did a good job of getting the hand in there. 
steals and turnovers. It may come down to how many GCU can force from the Vaqueros. Three-pointer there taken. This one doesn't go. Goff couldn't, that, couldn't get that one to fall. Still 20-20. Exactly what we need is to mobily pressure that defense right there and drive in on them, break them up a little bit, and draw the man on looking for an open player. Pass there by Rarick. Unable to be handled. And alternate possession in the jump ball will go to GCU. So Anaya Baker now will throw it in, guarded by Bernicia Peters, all five foot three of her. Mobley, five on the shot clock. Drives right, pulls up. Can't get that one to fall, just misses. Mobley grabs her own rebound. They'll say she was on the line as the shot went from Vanessa Murphy after the whistle. And it didn't matter, a timeout will be called. It'll be a full timeout on the court, 2020. We'll be right back. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. The drought's still on. 20 to 20, three and a half minutes. Scoreless for the Vaqueros, three minutes for GCU. Which one of these teams is gonna grab that offensive momentum? It's been all defense so far. Absolutely. I'd like to see GCU really crash the boards offensively and move the ball around a little bit more, doing a nice job there of attempting to get that half-court steal. Another almost turnover right as we started off that timeout. Massacoy, that is an offensive foul, clearly an offensive foul. Tristan Murphy all in the face of Zelor Massacoy. Two minutes to go in the first half. Massacoy doing a nice job of positioning herself to be able to pick up that chart or that play right there at the top of the key. Little strategy time here. We're waiting for the inbound for each, oh, they're gonna go to the boards again. Look at the replay. And I think they're, what are they looking to see if it was a foul, if it was technical maybe? How much time is left on the clock? Yes, yes, they are looking to see if it's a technical on Zelor Massacoy against Zelor Massacoy. All in the face. They're reviewing the play here. The ref's very technical in this game, and I think that's leading to a little bit of the breakdown and the sort of sloppiness on both sides that we're seeing some silly fouls, some silly out of bounds called really knowing our Core awareness, sensory data really going into play here. Maskoy did a great job though. She set up nicely and know where she was position wise. And we'll see if she gets that technical. We'll see, they just finished reviewing the play here. They'll discuss together and make the final call. A lot of delay of game. Feel like I'm watching football today, Alex. I was going to say, uh, way, way too many breaks in this game. Not letting them play basketball. Looks like it'll end up being Lopes possession. Lair me into Anaya Baker. Now set for play again, as Baker's gonna take it up. Two minutes to go in the first half, tied at 20. 
drought. Four events for the Vaqueros, three and a half for GC. Let's see if they can end it right here. The Lopes have only led for 20 seconds. Mobley left, gets it off to Baker, who looks to make something happen with eight seconds on the shot clock. Laramie back and down, out to Mobley, top of the key, way off line and pulled down by Bernicia Peters. And the Vaqueros come up with it. Corner, almost intercepted. As Anaya Baker's everywhere in the faces of this UTRGV team on offense. She is wreaking havoc on these lackadaisical passes. Yeah, she's putting a lot of pressure on these Vaquero guards here. They're not really sure what to do with her. She's eyeing every pass that they're giving, really putting herself in good position to pick up these steals and force these turnovers. Down low, there's a foul called Zelor Masakoy. Yeah, she came out swinging on that one. You could see that one when they won up together. You got to stay straight up and down if you're going to jump with the shooter there. You could see she swung at that, picking up that foul. Megan Johnson's going to look to put the first points on the board in the last five minutes. 14 apiece after the first quarter. And now 21-20 of Akero's lead. In some basketball around the nation today, Connecticut's women's basketball team sets an NCAA record with its 91st straight win after defeating SMU 88 to 48. The team never loses. <laughs> I know. Historic team that really has a legendary winning schedule. Tic-tac-toe passing, unable to finish though, Rarick had the perfect opportunity, had to put it up with her left hand and couldn't do it. One minute to go. Trail by two, and a lapse in defense there leaves Megan Johnson wide open, who was fouled, and uh, she'll go back to the line. Two shots coming up. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Early in the second quarter, you can't be picking up your third foul. We, see that a lot, you know, with these ticky tacky calls that it's easy to pick up, you know, your second, third, fourth foul. And that can be difficult, frustrating as a player to play so hands off, you know. She'll probably sit the bench until second half. You can't find many players on the court right now that haven't gotten a foul. There's been so many in this game. The three point lead from Johnson's field goal to extend it to four in a two possession game, it does. And August Touchard will throw it in here. 55 seconds remaining. Tajewski looking for something. Baker out beyond the three point line. They continue to swing it around. Laramie drives to her right, can't get that one off the glass, pulled down by Mobley. And she's unable to put that one in. Now August Touchard, 11 seconds separate shot and game clock. Down to the corner, Laramie unable to get this one to fall. And it's pulled down by the Vaqueros again. A jump ball will lead to an alternate possession for UTRGV and a chance to build on the lead as the first half comes to a close. Laramie shooting tough though down low. You can see her shaking her head, getting a little frustrated, but she's playing tough. The Vaquero's all over her, and I'm guessing that they've been told stick to her because they know she's our highest shooter here for the Lopes, averaging 20 points a game. In the second half, she just has to keep shooting and those will fall. Corner. And there's a travel call, so now GCU, 3.4 seconds to go. The Lopes coming out on her in about a 2-1 corner trap there, forcing that travel. You saw her get a little flustered there. Had really no room to do anything or look for an open man. Great little defensive effort right there by the Lopes. She's been suffocating all half. There's 1.5, Marcos Canedo. 
Making an attempt from half court, won't get fouled. That's halftime, 24 to 20. We'll be right back with banter about the first half after this. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. It's halftime, 24 to 20. The Vaqueros lead GCU, and it's been really defense all mm -hmm. game for each team. Eight points for the Vaqueros in the second quarter, six mm -hmm. for Grand Canyon, and uh, field goals for the Vaqueros, 27% for GCU, 23. Yep. If we want to see mm -hmm. some more points in the second half, you're going to have to see these percentages improving. Absolutely, yeah, we really want to see them transition a little bit better, see them move the ball, open up on the court, really, and have a little bit of offensive structure going on. It's been a little ticky-tacky with the fouls, and that's really not on us. The refs are just calling it very closely. But, of course, it's been a great week for GCU basketball on both the men's and women's side, but across the Western Athletic Conference as well. Let's take a look at women's hoop in the Western Athletic Conference. It's time for the WAC Roundup for women's basketball the week of January 10th, 2017. UTRGV hosting Chicago State on the WAC Digital Network. First quarter, Shante Goff goes off the glass and gets the foul. This is a WAC Top 5 nominee, but Chicago State jumps out to the early lead. Tiana Thomas with the drive to the hoop. Cougars lead 15-10, end of the first quarter. Kaylee Allen hits the three with time winding down. The Cougars lead by 10 after one. They would also lead at the half in the third quarter. Nice up and under move by Megan Johnson. UTRGV pulls away, winning by a final of 71-43. In Las Cruces, New Mexico State hosting UMKC. Aries Washington comes off the bench for the Ruse to score a team high 18. UMKC leading 39-37 at the half. Time winding down in the third when Zaire Williams hits the three. Aggies up by six. It's close throughout, under 20 seconds to go. Mariah Mack goes to the rack, reverse layup. Gives New Mexico State a four-point lead. That's also a WAC Top 5 nominee. NM State wins 78-72. The WAC Player of the Week is Brooke Salas of New Mexico State. She helped the Aggies to two victories, scoring a total of 30 points while grabbing 14 rebounds and dishing out seven assists. WAC standings, New Mexico State tied with UTRGV at 2-0. Grand Canyon and Seattle U. Also started with wins in the first week of conference play. The Lopes playing at Utah Valley. The Wolverines starting off well. Taylor Gordon with the putback. She scores 21 with seven rebounds. UVU leads after the first, second quarter. Grand Canyon goes on an 18-0 run. Jessica Gajewski scores 22 for GCU. Marina Laramie would score 12. Grand Canyon wins by a final of 62-46. We go to Seattle. The Red Hawks hosting CSU Bakersfield. First quarter, Jacinta Beckley hits the three as SU leads by 10. Second quarter, Bakersfield goes on a 14-0 run. Alexis Gilbert for three, and it's a one-point ball game. Game remains close in the second half, just over a minute to go, when Delaney Perry hits the three. That's up for the top five as well. Seattle U with the win, final 54-47. On the WAC Digital Network, the Red Hawks travel to UMKC on Thursday for a 7 p.m. tip. Utah Valley visits Chicago State, and UTRGV faces CSU Bakersfield. 
On Saturday, the Wolverines are at the Ruse and the Vaqueros play a big game at Grand Canyon. If you see a great play, let us know about it using the hashtag WACTOP5. As always, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Eric Danner. It's time for WAC in the Day, brought to you by GEICO. Back in the day, BYU dominated WAC football. Between 1972 and 1998, the Cougars won 18 WAC championships. That includes 10 titles in a row. Between 1976 and 1985, the team was coached by the legendary Lavelle Edwards, who passed away last week at the age of 86. Edwards led BYU to the national championship in 1984. That same year, he was named National Coach of the Year. Edwards won 168 conference games while in the WAC, more than any coach in conference history. The football stadium at BYU is named in his honor, and in 2004, Edwards was enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Eric Danner. BYU no longer in the WAC, but such a sad loss for everybody in the NCAA football community. Lavelle Edwards will be dearly missed, and he changed the entire game of football. So for everybody, they send their condolences, especially we do here at GCU. And this week was Student Worker Appreciation Week here on campus at GCU. Started on the 11th and continues till the 17th where student workers will enjoy a free barbecue before the men's basketball game that night. And here's a look at some of the student workers here on campus. I feel like my job has transformed me to be a more confident individual. I remember the first days that I started working at GCU. I was very hesitant to answer the phones, but with the help of my coworkers and my supervisor, I feel I'm able to communicate effectively with other people, and I have this new found confidence that I'll be able to carry with me throughout the rest of my life, and I think it's very important for um, my field of study, which is physical therapy. I feel like I try to inspire my students to do a good job and make sure that they're confident in what they're doing, but in the end, I feel like a lot of times they inspire me to be a better manager. GCBC, honestly, I'm so proud of working at Grand Canyon Beverage Company because it affects GCU so much. Like, I see people walking around and they're carrying their Grand Canyon cups or the GCBC cups, and I'm just so proud. I'm like, wow, I work at that place. It honestly is just, like, so amazing. We really appreciate everything that our student workers do for us. They are our foundation. They really help us get the next group of individual students in, and they are our future leaders, so we rely on them a lot. Working as a student worker, you definitely, I've personally seen myself grow throughout the years, um, from freshman year to senior year this year. It's been an experience and quite a journey. You definitely grow, and you. what's great about working as a student worker is that your managers, your coworkers, um, and just entire career services really harness your skills and your talents and want you to excel in those. Um, so they really help you with that. They work with you um, and you work with them in that same aspect as well. So just being able to grow and grow every day. You know, we all grow as humans, um, but to grow professionally as well is most important and being a student worker, you're able to achieve and do that. Our student workers and hiring managers make an impact. Go Wolves! Such a great video showcasing, of course, some of our great student workers here on campus. I know I'm very honored to be a student worker here, as I'm sure you are as well, Alex. It's certainly great for GCU to show their appreciation to us as student workers. Mm -hmm. Speaking of student workers in a different way, the student athletes mm -hmm. men's volleyball kicked off last week, just up, just kicked, uh, wrapped up two games in Hawaii and a nice trip there. Let's take a look at what head coach Matt Wuerl said about their preparation over Christmas break and what to expect from the 2017 season. We've really proven ourselves this year, both in the classroom and on the court. There's been a lot more structure to what we're doing and the guys have really bought into it. So every day they know what they're getting themselves into. You know, we have very, very quick chalk talk sessions and then we're out on the court and then we'll come back to the board talk about some things but just the way that the coaches are being so vocal and there's just always positive feedback in the gym it just creates this environment that is you know really leading to some success and we've done a lot of small group work uh, just so it's a lot of personal contact with 
you know, players to coaches, but also players to players, just to get on the same page. And actually, the culture, the culture in the gym is stronger than it's ever been. The guys have really bought in and wanted to stick around even through Christmas just to be here and just to put the time in to, you know, prep for what's ahead. This is a huge game of momentum. And as soon as you start dwelling on what's happened in the past, typically your mind will immediately lead to something negative in the future too. So we're looking on, you know, moving forward so that they can really kind of reset their mind and just focus on, you know, what's next as opposed to something that happened in the past. We're using a keyword, and you've heard me say it probably a couple times, it's dedicated. Dedicated on the court, dedicated to each other, dedicated to this program, dedicated in the classroom. Whatever we do, we are going to be dedicated. Moving into this season, we, we hit the court, you know, on the road two weekends in a row against some tough teams. and. You know, if we're dedicated to you know, what's at hand at that given time, we'll be just fine. We have a new strength coach that's working with the guys and also a new athletic trainer. So really, top to bottom, you know, this is a whole new program. And we want to say we're working from the ground up. There has been something pre-established, which we're building off of. But the two new coaches, Troy, Troy brings something. He was a high school teacher. He taught special ed, and he brings a different scope to the game. He also coached high school, he has a couple state championships under his belt. He's had some really good things on the coaching side. AJ Nally has played a lot. He's played five years pro, he's been in the USA pipeline, and he brings you know the playing background to things. So we actually, we balance each other really, really well. Being that we have 10 new guys on our roster of the 22, we're balancing some GCU experience with some experience outside of the GCU program. And you know we're, we're expecting a lot out of these guys. I don't think we have a whole lot of respect right now across the country, so we have something to prove. You know, we open up at UCI, and I believe they're currently preseason ranked number eight on the road at UCSD the same weekend, and then head to Hawaii, and Hawaii is ranked, you know, preseason seven. So it's gonna be really tough, and then diving deeper into our conference, you know, Lewis is six, Ohio State reigning national champions. Loyola Chicago, I think, is 11. We have, we have a really, really tough schedule this year, and, you know, I think we're ready. I really do think we're ready. The men's volleyball team seems very prepped and ready for another exciting season. Their first home opener will be right here, of course, January 20th. They'll play. You can see all that action right here at GCU TV. And Coach, of course, seems very confident in all the men's dedication and their commitment to filling a high expected season. Of course, like you said, they're traveling back today from two games they played in Hawaii and look to open up their season here in about a week. So we got a few minutes left before the kickoff of this second half. What do you expect, Alex? Well, it's been an uncharacteristic game for all of the GCU shooters. Marina Laramie, mm -hmm. eight points, of course, 23 yeah. points against New Mexico State, only shooting three of 11 from the field. Mm -hmm. So for GCU, especially to come back and win this game, they're gonna need to one, get rebounds as they're trailing 26 to 20. That's something we talked at the top of the broadcast of right. what they would need to do to win. And then they must improve their shooting percentage, simple enough. They have to find ways to take higher percentage shots and they have to find ways to uh, you know, get open, move a little bit more, stop shooting over these Vaquero shooter, uh, defenders. Absolutely. We've seen them slightly break down a little bit defensively. We'd like to see some stops made, of course. They've done a good job of keeping them outside of the pain. That's something we want to see them continue to do, of course. And, of course, see them take, like you said, more high percentage shots and drive in a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and look at some first half highlights here. We're shooting that two-pointer right there. Rarick, one of five from the field and uh, one of three from, the, from behind the three-point line. Only five points for her, so another uncharacteristic performance. Laura Marcus Canedo driving in left side for a little layup. And I have Baker back over to Laramie. That was such a great two-on-one defensive play. Saw each other nicely. Little handoff to Mobley. Drive and dish right in. Yep. Great little second angle for you. Yeah, a couple of these, though, have uh, been duplicated. And uh, the result's not the same, GCU. A couple of other wide open cuts not able to finish. And that's a reason why they trail They've only led for 20 seconds here today, but the second half, GCU 
always seems to uh, make adjustments. Mm -hmm. GCU scoring their most points in the second quarter. Okay. That not holding true in this game, of course, and their second most points in the fourth quarter. So it's going to be a second half focus game for GCU mm -hmm. as the first half is over. Erase what they've done and uh, yeah. come out with a different strategy. Yeah, I think they didn't necessarily have a terrible first half, but they are a second half team. We have to admit that. Trent May has even said that too. They come out with a little bit more fire in the second half against New Mexico State. They went on an 11-0 run after the second half, really bringing that two-point deficit closer into that game. So I think this is going to be a whole new game in the second half. I think they're going to come out more refreshed. The Vaqueros, of course, are probably going to come out just as refreshed. We're going to expect a lot more from them. Of course, we're going to have to deal with the refs calling this game so closely as they're not necessarily used to, and we'll probably see some defensive transitions as well. But we're about to start it off here. We'll see if the referees are a little more loose in the second half as we're underway. Mobley losing possession there, something exactly what the Lopes didn't want, but able to pick it up. Laramie nice. open, and there it is to start off the second half, just what you wanted. That's right. An almost turnover by the Lopes, and a nice hustle play by Mobley. Yeah, Laramie is going to be happy with that one. She really builds confidence from doing well, and that's going to start off the second half just what we wanted. Marcus Canedo getting off to Zelor Masakoy. And Masakoy will take it down, just unable to get it to fall. And there is three Mobley to put it back. Savoy a fadeaway guarded by two and she'll get two shots. Or Goff, I should say. Shantae Goff. Is he gonna go to the line? GCU still unable to regain this lead. Goff's first one good and it's the lead back to the Vaqueros, 25 to 24. Yeah, we have to be careful with those fouls. We don't want our star players on the bench necessarily. Casey Rerick checking back in the half after seeing an end to her first half, picking up her third foul. So the Lopes really going to need to be careful on the defensive effort. GCU, if they were to finish this way well under as a huge three ball for Shantae Goff, would finish well under their season average of 66.5 points a game. Not the strongest offensive performance so far. Rarick looking for some uh, foul, a uh, surefire foul on Bernicia Peters. Has been this, obviously the smallest on the court, but has been one of the most aggressive in terms of defense and passing. Twenty-eight to twenty-four, and the inbounds to Laramie. The pass lobbed up, unable to keep it in as Laramie, and a wasted possession there for the Lopes. Mobley guards Goff. Carson's daughter drives. Good job of sliding, but a foul. Wow, they're going to call a foul on GCU. It's going to lead to a throw-in for the Vaqueros, and uh, not a good call at all in the eyes of the GCU coaches. The Lopes doing a nice job in that corner play. They really come out into that 2-1 trap, which really puts the pressure on, allowing them to really attempt to turn over the ball there, and a nice little turnover steal there. Yeah, another kind of errant pass by Bernicia Peters. She seemed to force it in there too much as Mobley fouled. Don't see a throw in. An aggressive foul 
right at half court. Tristan Murphy comes on. Mary Savoy off for the Vaqueros underneath. And it's pulled down by Carson, Carson's daughter. A good rebound and a well needed one by the Vaqueros looking to stretch this lead. Pass to the corner. Megan Johnson drives, unable to hold on, and Marcos Canedo will come up with it again for the Lopes. Rarick in the corner decides against shooting that three ball. Mobley works with a screen from Zelor Masakoy. Through five, basically the whole Vaquero team defending her, she'll put it up. Won't get it to fall, but we'll see two shots. And Bree Mobley will be the one taking them. The Vaqueros really transitioning their defensive style here, collapsing more inside the paint, allowing us, forcing us outside the arc. But of course, we are such a great shooting team beyond the arc, having 117 baskets beyond the arc. Haven't really seen that too much today, Alex, but the second half could be a totally different game. Uh, only one three-point ball from GCU so far today. Three from the Vaqueros. Usually this arena used to seeing more fall from behind that three-point line, but not today. Not so far. 7.15 left in the third. Carson's daughter passed down in the and one. Tristan Murphy. That looks like it was a call on Casey Rarick. That's going to be bad news for her, Alex. I think that might send her to the bench for a little bit. Looking like her fourth personal foul, and that's going to mean trouble in the water. She's the one with the only three-point shot here for the Lopes this afternoon. They're really going to pick up, need to pick up her slack, really. And another turnover, as we see, and it'll be a 2 on 0 Anaya Baker wide open. They're going to wave it off and call an offensive foul. You have to be Alex Bloom. Alex Bloom called on the foul. The basket that was dead to rights for the Lopes taken off the board. And you cannot be happy with that if you're the Lopes coaching staff. Exactly what you talked about last game and being able to turn it around from last game, not those little mistakes with the and ones and points that, uh, fouls that get points off the board. As Bernicia Peters will hit a three ball for the Vaqueros, it's a five point lead. Alex Bloom needs to just shake that one off and remain confident here and knock down some shots. Big shot by Massagoy there, needed that two point jumper. 28-31 now, Alex closing in on this lead. You'll see the replay, assist from Laramie there inside the paint. Nice little swoosh for her. Well, we talked about high percent shots. That one, not necessarily one of them, but Zelor Massagoy able to find her mark from inside the paint. And GCU pulls down that rebound and another empty possession for the Vaqueros, 31-28, six minutes to go in the third. Baker will get it to Mobley, then cut. Mobley looking for something, Zelor Mascoy, a three ball from the corner is good! Ties up! The loudest this place has been all afternoon. And it's a tie game here halfway through the third. Zelor Mascoy jacks up the wide open three. Big play by the Lopes there. Mobley almost tripping on that pass out to Massacoy, but she nailed that one. 31-31 now in GCU Arena. Goff drives right hard. Aggressive, she's fouled. Got to travel. So hands in the face. Zelor Massacoy and Laramie doing the duties. A good rotation to Goff will force a travel. And that 20 seconds of lead time may be able to extend on that here, the Lopes. Anaya Baker up top waits, surveys. Now Mobley. Mobley went for the pick, finds one left from Laramie. Drives left, pulls up. Doesn't hit the rim, no good. And it's rebounded by the Lopes. Laramie. Gets it up to Baker. We have an injured Vaquero on the field. It's Bernicia Peters. Three ball taken by Baker. Just barely didn't go. 
in a very rough series defensively on that sequence will lead to a Vaquero possession. So no fouls there. Good job of biting the whistle of the refs. And a three ball hit in the corner there. Nichelle Hyman, her third three-point ball and a timeout called. 34-31, we'll be right back. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. This is a uh, completely different yeah. second half as the first one. The momentum is on the opposite spectrum, and it's all the way pumped up. The fans here uh, cheering on the Lopes harder than they did the first half, and uh, I really like the momentum and the energy that the Lopes are bringing to this third quarter so far. Absolutely. Beeler Massacoy really changing that dynamic of the game, hitting that three there. Mobley almost falling down on that assist there, but picking that three point up really did a number for GCU. And I think they're going to come out after this timeout, a whole new team. You can see them playing a lot more aggressively with a lot more confidence and really running the ball with some speed. We don't want to see a rushed game, but we would like to see a little bit more momentum pushing the ball up the court. What really holds true to me, at least it seems every time, is the adjustments that the Lopes and head coach Trent May are able to make off mm -hmm. the timeouts. And they always seem to uh, adjust to the strategies the opponents uh, devise. Yep. But here, let's see if UTRGV, are they out of solutions against this GCU defense? It seems like the last couple possessions for GCU has really shifted momentum from completely to the Vaqueros now to completely to the Lopes. So the start off this timeout, 34-31. I'm excited. That side, Lord, that side, that side. And now Marcos Canedo up with the ball. Baker drives left. Massacoy fakes that three ball. Good job of drawing in the defense, but Laramie can't get that shot to go. Now over to Karchin's daughter. She'll put up, honestly, a really not good looking shot. And this one is not much better. Cornered <laughs> by Megan Johnson. No, it didn't look much better, that's for sure. They seem to be rushing their shot off here. I don't know if that's due to our GCU defense putting all the pressure on them. You see Zeeler Massacoy playing great in the post down there against her guard. Well, you come out with these adjustments and make the other team think, and they start to uh, kind of pr uh, press a little more and make more errors. As that shot, no good by Megan Johnson, rebounded by Anaya Baker in the Lopes. 3.45 to go, 34-31. Marcos Canedo looking to tie this game up or at least distribute the ball that will tie this game up. Baker with it, down to Laramie. Off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebounded by Megan Johnson. And now the Vaqueros, a chance to extend this three-point lead. Laramie not necessarily having the game I think she wants to have, but still playing strong here. She needs to remain confident under the basket and use her body. She's getting a little mismatched under the basket so she can use that to her advantage. Post up and really drive in underneath. And this is, will it be a timeout? Yes, a timeout on the court. We'll be right back, 34-31. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. When they say find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. 
private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Since the first quarter, UTRGV, 10 points in the paint. They only have 12 now. So the fixes have came from GCU, and now we talked about towards that end near the timeout, kind of the forces that the Vaqueros are taking uh, from field goals. The shots aren't looking very good, and they're not going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's seeming like a rushed game for the Vaqueros. They're coming out, I think, a little flustered, and that's due to our GCU defense. We really transitioned well. We wanted to see Coach Trent May really transition the defense into a little more pressure on body-to-body -body defense. We saw them give a lot of gaps and rooms early on for them to shoot. They're feeling a little forced. I don't think they have the confidence to really drive in on our height difference, so forcing these rush shots. And that's all the good for us. We can pick up those easy rebounds and transition offensively. Right, 34-31. And uh, the Lopes have done such a great job of getting good inbound mm -hmm. plays too. They have. It may come down to the small things like that. Fouls, who cannot foul down this stretch of 315? And, you know, turnovers, yeah, inbounding. Mm -hmm. The Vaqueros have done plenty of times, passed it over there. They inbounded it there. See, another rush shot for the Vaqueros. They're not setting their feet, really not giving an opportunity to set up their shot, really just kind of throwing anything and everything up there. Definitely thinking they're feeling this pressure here, wanting to force their lead. Well, yeah, pressure is gonna lead to the outside shots, and if you're GCU, just let them shoot from outside, because they've done so well, poorly, I guess, as an adjective, the Vaqueros have. I mean, it really has been a poor display. So, a wise tactic to just let the Vaqueros keep inbounding it up top. And we've seen turnovers from that. GC, GC doing a nice job of forcing turnovers. Great shot by Marina Laramie there, down on the, off the glass. On the inbound, just what we said. <laughs> nice little inbound play there. Laramie getting it done. They've looked for her all afternoon on the inbound. She has 12 points on the game, a little low for her. She's been averaging over 20 in just about every single game. She had 23 points against New Mexico. In a game like another shot from outside, this one does go. Karchin's daughter gets it to go, but in a game like this where the outside shots aren't going, the little things like finding ways to get underneath on the inbounds are so important. GC doing a good job. Marcos Canedo looking for something. Baker puts that one up. Vaqueros playing an extended 2-3 body-to-body defense. They're playing man up top and zone down low, knowing that Laramie is in there. Nice little block for Mobley, Mobley right there. Mobley the, only the second block for GCU. She really got some height on that one. Came out nicely on that guard, forcing that shot. Once again for the Vaqueros, playing a little bit rushed offensively. Not being able to really set up any structured plays here. Drives it. Good job getting that pass off over a defender. Could she see a better job staying in the face and forcing a shot that did not go? Laramie grabbing that board there. Playing so tough down low all night. She's done a great job of rebounding and staying under the basket using her size to her advantage. Marcos Canedo's pass won't get through to the teammate. And it'll be another turnover. 13 for the Lopes this afternoon. One minute remaining here in this third quarter. 33-37, Vaquero shoot for three, no good. Shantae Goff, Goff's one for six from the three-point line. Little scramble offensively there between Canedo and Baker, looking to set something up above the arc. Now Vaquero's really collapsing in the paint. Mobley off the glass and in. Two-point deficit here for the Lopes, 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Nice pick play up top. They've been, uh, we've been seeing that, the picks, the high pick and then the drive 
right, finally able to get that one to go her way. Seen a couple times, pick's not working. Karchin's daughter, oh man, a nice double clutch down low to turn on the defense. I haven't seen the touch from the Vaqueros so far like that as Baker puts up a three ball at the last second. That is the end of the third quarter. We'll go to the fourth. The Vaqueros lead 39-35. Stay with us. Welcome back to G2 Arena. A close game here to end the third quarter. 35-39 as we end this game going into the fourth quarter. What's going to need to change, Alex, so we can take this lead and ultimately get a victory this afternoon? It's the little things. You have to be able to stop the Vaqueros on defense once you get some points on offense because it's been punch, counter, punch essentially the whole game. Mm -hmm. And GCU needs punch, 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 and then counter punch because they need to regain this lead. They've only had it for 20 seconds because they haven't been able to make the stop after an offensive conversion. That's exactly right. They haven't made that big stop that we've needed all game long. It's been, this is it. This is the transition that we need here. Mobley two on one. Right, so you keep getting the steals like that, and then you gotta convert and put it in, and now the Vaqueros are gonna come down and see, they'll convert like that. That yeah. is exactly what you cannot have if you're yeah. in the Grand Canyon Lopes. You have to be able to finish in steals and chances that you don't usually get. And that's why the Vaqueros have this six-point edge. I'm seeing a little bit of a lack of communication, too, defensively between the Lopes. They do such a great job offensively getting the ball in the paint, everything like that. But the little details on the defensive side, they seem to lack where they know exactly where to position themselves. And the Vaqueros, honestly, not shooting great tonight. And we need to take advantage of that, and we really have in this whole game. And although our shots, shots aren't falling really either, we need to capitalize on their lack of shooting and be able to know exactly where we are on the defensive play. And, of course, another review of play here, we've had this all game long, Alex, reviewing this little foul, I believe, down low under the basket. The refs will take a look and see just exactly what happened. Well, that last play in the breakaway and the steal, sort of a two on one with the Vaquero defender trailing Mobley. Would have liked to see the uh, trailing GCU player spread out, sort of get a two on one to have that option to pass over in case uh, the defender crashed to Mobley, but wasn't able to get to the hole fast enough. And it's just little things like that. It could haunt GCU here, trailing 41 to 35. The next GCU game will be in Seattle as they play another conference opponent, Seattle U, January 21st at 5 p.m. Their next home game will be right here, aired on GCU TV, January 26th against UMKC. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. Forty-one thirty-five early in this fourth quarter. Really needing to narrow down and make those key shots as well. Free throws, win and lose games as well, Alex, as we always say. So. 
Cutting back on these fouls, not forcing the Vaqueros to the line. Yeah, that review had to make sure you get it right, especially in a game like this. Seven points, but it's been back and forth all game. A point could be the deciding factor in this one. Jujewski drives left, kicks out to Baker. Now Baker looks to find a cutter. Jujewski not scoring all game long. Really unusual for a big three-point sh shooter. Puts it up, no good, but the WAC leading Zelor Masakoy pulls that one down, averaging 8.5 rebounds a game. Mobley drives the left, nothing there. Carded by Karchin's daughter. Mobley really driving in with no purpose there. Kind of came in and came out. And those are the little errors we have to avoid. She'll drive in for two and get fouled there. The touch and the finish. Uh, Got to be able to get and ones. The Vaqueros have done that. A little bit better finished when they've been fouled under the rim. Able to get the basket to go and uh, a chance to make it a three-point play instead of two. Yeah, it's all about finishing those easy shots and those key shots that win the games. It's the important ones that count, the ones under the basket that are more high percentage guarded like that where you can capitalize on the two point and draw the foul, forcing a three point really possession as you said, Alex. Well, it's not to say it was an easy shot, certainly a high level of difficulty, but Seems that GCU hasn't made any of those today, and you got to see a couple go in. Yeah, nearly 50% below their average, Alex. They're averaging nearly around 66 points a game, and they're at 36 right now. Vaquero's low shooting as well. They're roughly around the same average, and they're, you know, 42 points in the fourth quarter. This has really been quite a low-scoring game, unusual for both conference teams. Yep. Like we said, 66 points a game for GCU. 65 for the Vaqueros. Eight minutes to go and 42-36 the score as Laramie pulls that one down. Big rebound for her. Like to see her get a few more offensive rebounds as well. They've been struggling with those under the basket offensively. The Vaqueros getting in there. You know, we have the height advantage on them as well if we can pull those down. Mobley, good shot, but doesn't fall on the right side of the basket. Jump ball, alternate possession, I believe. Stays with Grand Canyon. Karchin's daughter is called for the push. And Casey Rarick comes on. Jessica Jajewski comes off. Anaya Baker throws in. Let's see if they can find a nice little inbound play for some easy two points. Watch Marina Laramie. There it is underneath there. Every single yep. time. Yeah, Alex, that's been there all game long, really. They've only capitalized on it a few times, but Laramie's there wide open every single time. The Cuero's failing to really see the lack of open space right there. Big rebound play right there. Picking up a foul, though, I believe, on GCU. Be under the basket. Laramie called on the foul. And it'll be a throw in here. Karchin's daughter. Four point game, 42 38. Fouls galore here this afternoon. Yeah, it's really been a closely called game. Three-point ball. Bjorg, Karchin's daughter. This is what we don't want to happen, is this lead getting away from us. 45-38, still within grips. Seven minutes left to play. Rarick answers yes. back for a big three at the top of the key. And that'll force a lopes timeout. Great play put on by Casey Rarick. Here's the replay. Assist by Anaya Baker. Nice one from Casey Rarick. We'll be right back after this. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. 
Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. I am Laura Lozoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. And welcome back to a close game. Casey Brerich nailing that three-pointer at the top of the key. We've wanted to see that from her all game long. She hit that early on from the left side wing. First quarter, coming back and shooting that really changes the dynamic of this fourth quarter. 41-45 now, Alex. How do we get the lead? We've got to stop turning the ball over. And when we get steals, which we lead, UT RGV, by the way, 11 to 4 in steals. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to capitalize. You got to get points and then make a stop on defense. You, you got to stop fouling down low. Mm -hmm. you know, play a little cleaner and uh, get a run. Get a run of your own here. That's what GCU needs. It's all about finishing right now. We've really come so far and made great moves, but it's all about finishing those shots, finishing those free throws. All of that, being able to, like you said, get the steal and be able to get a shot off. 50 field goal attempts for Grand Canyon so far. They're 15 of 50, 30 percent. We shot 43 percent from the field against New Mexico. Yeah, the average this season is 40 percent. Talked about making a stop on defense. Can't quite make it happen there. As Tristan Murphy puts that one in. And I believe GCU is a stronger defensive team than the Vaqueros. Casey Ware goes for a second three. Yeah, Nailing that one at the top of the key as well. 44-47. Here's the replay. Another assist by Anaya Baker right to Casey Ware. Oh, man. And a response there for Nisha Peters. Got to get out and apply the pressure. You get a three for your own. You can't just surrender it right back. Tough break there. Fortunately, GC is going to keep possession. Man, that was close. A six point game. You need all the breaks you can get. Getting that one there maybe could have gone either way. The inbound not there to Laramie this time. Good job of the Vaqueros making a change and putting Karchin's daughter on. Laramie, probably the best one to guard Laramie in terms of size. Mobley drives left, quickly doubled, and there's Laramie for a three ball. It's good. 50 to 47, a timeout called. Not a timeout called. Yeah, it's been a little confusing here with the refs this evening. Lots of calls, lots of stoppage of play, but we're back in action here. Big three-pointer by Laramie. We needed that one. Need to make a stop here. A foul, look, don't know how, but the foul was called on the Vaqueros. GCU's gonna get the ball, but gotta capitalize here. A four-point game. Five minutes, 45 seconds to go. This cannot be an empty possession here if you're Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's all about a few perfect series here. If we can make a few more great possessions and capitalize and turn these possessions into points, this is our game, Alex. And Naya Baker, no need to rush here also for GCU. That's the main point as Mobley puts this one up, and it's good. Starting to hit those shots a little bit better now. 34%. That rises from 29 after the last time. I have a timeout cold on the court by UTRGV. Two-point game. We'll be right back. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. 
GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. We talked about it at the top of the broadcast about how GCU is a second half team yeah. and uh, more specifically a fourth quarter team. And that's what they're seeing here, hitting the last three shots, two of them three pointers. It's awesome to see Grand Canyon finding their strike stride now, um, especially when they need it the most. Absolutely, it was those two, three players who made those perfect shots that we needed to really change this game. 48-50, the Vaqueros truly feeling the pressure now, forcing a timeout. GC with the advantage. Mobley almost got a hand in there on that pass. And as a problem, moving pick down low, I'm certain that's what it was. Yeah, that'll be an offensive foul call on the Vaqueros. That's the stop we need, Alex. We've been looking for something big to happen in our favor all afternoon and if we get this shot off here it'll be a tied game or we can take the lead yeah that was an obvious foul on utrgv it's not going to be two shots but it will be an inbound and an opportunity to get a possession that will tie it up and the inbound oh, we will see two shots Oh, yeah. We're going to see two from Rarick. I uh, didn't expect that to be called a shooting foul, but it was. Well, each team has hit their bonus, that's why. Rarick with 12 points this afternoon, putting up big numbers above her average of 10 a game. She'll go 100% from the free throw line making this a tied game 50-50. You'll see the Lopes now transition into a 2-2-1 full court press, forcing the Vaqueros to truly rush this game and make something happen. And just for exactly what you wanted, turn the momentum. And that's what they do here. Now a must capitalize possession here for GCU. 50-50, this is exactly what we talk about. Converting down the home stretch. This is what you practice for as Massacoy and Mobley, a bit of a communication error. Mobley drives left. Massacoy, a shot with one in her face. Eh. Tristan Murphy's about 6'4". I didn't like that shot. Take there by Massacoy and turned it over, going now to the Vaqueros, Bernicia Peters. It's good ball movement by the Lopes, so you see three, four shots off, couldn't really make anything fall, but that's okay. As long as we're moving the ball, as long as we're taking those, they will fall. Four minutes left. We don't want to see anything rushed, of course. The high-quality shots, high-quality opportunities. This could be our game. 6-0 run for Grand Canyon in the last two minutes and no points in the last two minutes, 45. Chance to take the lead now. Mobley cuts, and there's the lead. The first one since the second quarter. They've led for 20 seconds combined this whole game. Let's see how long this one will last, hopefully for the remaining three minutes and 10 seconds of this ball game. Defense suffocating more than they have all game. Karchin's daughter puts up a shot with one her face, Massacoy. Done. She made that one. And a timeout will be called on the court by GCU. A one point lead for the Vaqueros, 53 52. Don't go anywhere. Hey, WAC fans, if you see a top play or any great WAC shin, let us know about it using the hashtag WACTOP5. Then go to our Instagram every Monday to see if your video made the cut. Be sure to vote on your favorites and tune in to the WAC Digital Network on Wednesdays to see where each play ranks. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Jesse Punch. Completely different Lopes team than we saw in the first half and even we could say the third quarter. There's six of eight on their last eight field goals and uh, that's something that we haven't seen all game 
34%, 19 of 56 to be exact from the field. They haven't done very well at all, but uh, doing it when they need it the most here down the stretch of the fourth quarter. That's right, you can see they're playing very carefully, but with momentum, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. We wanted to see them really capitalize on those plays and really lose the mistakes, the easy mistakes, and get those shots off. You're seeing Mobley really think down low and think smart. She got that shot up where she needed to nicely, and that's exactly what all we can expect from the Lopes, and it's a whole different game now in the fourth quarter. The Vaqueros are completely flustered, and they definitely seem out of their game plan. Yes. It'll be Let's Lopes' possession. Massacoy under the basket will pass into Anaya Baker. You'll see the Lopes attempt to slow it down just a little bit. They don't want to rush anything, of course force anything. Laramie for two and that'll fall just nicely off the basket. That'll put the Lopes back up by 1.54-53. You'll see the replay. Rarick bounce pass in. Spin move by Laramie up and over. Nice little play by both of those two. It's going to be important down the home stretch. The Vaqueros only one time out. GCU saved two. We'll see how early they call one of those two as a three-point ball from way downtown is good from Shantae Goff. And a two-point advantage again for the Vaqueros. Mobley all over her, too. He couldn't ask anything more, but that one fell. Mobley picking up that offensive rebound. Goes for two, and it falls! Relic tried to erase that deficit with a three. Mobley put it in, and GCU will call one of their two timeouts here. Tied up, 56-56. Don't go anywhere. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back to GCU Arena. If you're just now tuning in to the end of this game, it's sure to be an exciting finish. Last two minutes of the game, all tied up, 56-56. Mobley hitting that two-point jumper to tie it up. We'll see what happens now, Alex. It's sure to be an exciting end to this game. Nothing short of a great one for the Lobes here in GCU Arena. Yeah, and each team has uh, sort of found their scoring groove, getting closer to their season average. It just took a little longer for each team to get going, but this one's sure to come down to the wire. And fireworks is a three-pointer taken by Karchin's daughter is good. It's a three-point game. One timeout for each team here in the final minute and one half. Seems like all the shooters on all sides. Laramie for two yep. on the glass. Those are shots that GCU nor UTRGV was hitting in the first half and at the beginning of the third quarter. The bounces were going the opposite way for each team, but this time, good for GCU. And they trail by one with 1-10 remaining. It almost seems as if it took three quarters for both teams to warm up on the shooting side. Drives no, and it's pulled out by Peters. Gets off the shot clock, wanted a foul. Doesn't get it. She's not happy about that at all, is Bernicia Peters. But it doesn't matter. GCU's going to get possession and look to take, to erase this deficit and put it back into the hands of GCU. You'll see Coach Trent May signal to the girls for them to slow it down. You don't want to rush it. One point game, 50 seconds left. We're looking for that one key shot. I mean, looking for something. No, quickly doubled. Baker is guarded tightly there by Vanisha Peters. Laramie, can't out, call for trouble. I knew that was coming, dang it. I saw that. Yeah. Marina Laramie. She didn't quite get her feet set underneath. Yeah. She was definitely rushed. That's something that you can't allow to happen this close to the end of the game. 37 seconds left. The Vaqueros can run the shot clock out at this point. 
Yeah, too bad for uh, Laramie. Just sort of a mental mistake. Obviously not meaning to travel. But once she started, there was no going back. About six seconds sh separate shot and game clock. Peters, three ball from the corner, no good. Rebounded by Massapoy. And a timeout called by GCU. 13.7 seconds ago, the Lopes possession, 59-58. We'll be right back. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We talked, Taylor, we <laughs> talked about converting all game. Yeah. And uh, it's a one point game. That's what it's going to come down to. Can Grand Canyon convert on their final shot? Most likely, we will see them hold the ball with a final shot. A timeout left for the Vaqueros. But uh, obviously, Grand Canyon wanting to get the ball in their playmakers' hands, whoever that be, so many on their team with so little time. This is going to be very exciting to see if Grand Canyon can pull this one off, trailing basically all game long. Yeah, absolutely. This has been the theme of the game. Can they capitalize? Can they take the advantage and really finish it strong? And they have the opportunity. 13 seconds left. That's a lot of time in basketball. That's a lot of time to set up, get a good opportunity, and get a high-quality shot off. 59-58. This really is in our court and our advantage right here. We'll see what plays out. And fortunately, Grand Canyon, like you talked about too, no stranger to these close games. No, no stranger whatsoever. Mobley, top of the key, looks for a pick from Massacoy. Drives, up and in! It's good! GCU the lead with 3.4 to go! It's Bree Mobley, 17 against New Mexico State. The Vaqueros will call their last time out, and we will join you from GCU Arena and an exalted arena, 60 to 59. Yet no timeout on the court. UTRGV just looking to strategize for this final play, 4.6 seconds to go. Mobley executed on the perfect cut, a shot that she hadn't necessarily finished uh, consistently all game, <laughs> able to do it exactly when she needs to in the Lopes. A huge lead with 4.6 over in-conference foe, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Three, two point seconds to go. Drives. Miracle. Foul. Right there, I believe it'll be on the court though. They will be shooting one and one, I believe. We are in the bonus. Rarick comes off. And of course, they put the big Erica Thomas in 6-2. The inbound with .6 seconds to go. Puts it up. No good, and GCU wins. Absolutely. 60-59 for GCU. Mobley clutching the victory for the team this evening. What a great ending to really a spectacular game that they played all afternoon. What an awesome end to this game. So exciting here in GCU Arena. Such a big win. That'll change the conference standings for GCU, of course. They came in fourth into this game. The Vaqueros were sitting third. That'll transition the standings. And that'll mean big things. This was a big victory for GCU. They really did exactly what they we wanted them to do all afternoon. They capitalized on that victory. Such a great win tonight, Alex. All they needed to do was come back off the loss for New Mexico State, who is number one in the WAC. But now GCU just a little bit closer to them, and they'll see New Mexico State again because uh, this was a hard-fought game and so much resilience from GCU. Great job of the coaches able to strategize and get this Lopes team to turn around. That's right. Such a great victory. We hope that you enjoyed this game as much as we did. Very exciting. 
Of course, be sure to tune in the 17th when the men face San Diego Christian College. That will be at 7 p.m. with pregame beginning at 6.30. And the women will be away next week, but will return home to take on UMKC on January 26th. Of course, you can catch all that action right here on GCU TV. We thank you, of course, for tuning in all game long with us. Such a great victory for the GCU women today. I'm Taylor Bond alongside Alex Larson. Thank you and have a great afternoon.